All right, so Brad Ziffer, interesting guy, voiceover guy, uh, has a great studio. Maybe I'll get to see his uh, classic uh, vintage microphones one day when I'm in Jersey. But uh, here's a little sample of Brad's voiceover commercials, and then we'll start the interview. Listen up, folks. A shock to the system. 30 pound electric demo hammer? Check. 19 foot scissor lift? Got it. At United Rentals, we've got everything you need right at your local store. Through tough times, uncertainty, and prosperity, California has led our nation. And the California dream lives on. Natural, fresh. This is Miracle Grow Arrow Garden. Introducing Big Machine Label Group recording artist Brett Young and his debut single, Sleep Without You. Hey, Costco members, come to T-Mobile and get the Samsung Galaxy S6 for zero down. That wasn't Brad. I just want to sneak that in there because uh, that was actually Barry Manilow talking about the Polaroid Swinger back in the day. I didn't want to confuse you guys. All right, here's the interview and the music of Brad Ziffer. Here we go. It's the Ken Kojak 60s Jukebox Review. We're here every Tuesday, 8 to 11 p.m. And you were just listening to Brad Ziffer. And, uh, well, Brad, welcome to the Ken Kojak 60s Jukebox Review. So glad to have you. Thank you, Ken. Appreciate it. Great to be here. Well, great. I thank you so much. Okay, so I have a cheat sheet in front of me. And uh, it says here that you have a, a production company, a recording studio, and you've been singing now for 20 years, playing piano and singing. And what got you to do that all those years ago? Well, when I was younger, uh, probably around the age of five, I started piano lessons. Uh, my parents knew that uh, I had a knack for, I guess, uh, an ear for music. Mm. They bought me a keyboard at the time, and mm. I would be able to just listen to things off the radio and start playing them on the keyboard. So I started taking lessons at a young age, around the age of five. Mm. And I uh, took lessons probably for about ten years. Eventually started singing, mostly in, in school. That kind of led to music in churches. I was a music director uh, recently in a Catholic church, but prior to that I was heavily involved in worship in Assemblies of God churches, Baptist churches. And really, I, so I, I would say I got my start mostly in church in terms of... Mm getting in front of people, playing the piano, singing. Uh, I guess, you know, many artists have started in churches like Elvis. And uh, that's really where it kind of took off from there. Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, music's always been a passion of mine since I was really young. Right, right. But you were saying a lot of, a lot of the uh, musicians and singers got involved with gospel music back in the day. And, uh, yes, and, yeah. Yeah. And, and so, uh, you know, in, when you were growing up, what, what music did you listen to? Well, who were your favorite artists? Well, I have to say uh, Sinatra was a big one. Uh, my parents would always listen to easy listening stations, so I'd be in the back of the car, and they'd be jogging through channels on the radio, and they always loved easy listening. A lot of Sinatra. You know, Bobby Darren. Uh, oh. My father was a big fan of Roy Orbison. Oh, yeah. And, uh, he still is. And um, yeah, Dean Martin, all those good. My mom loves Johnny Mathis. So oh, yeah. I was always accustomed to hearing these artists, you know, on the radio. And yeah, I just took a real liking to that style, a like real crooner style of music, you know. Oh, that's great stuff. And and how about your, your friends growing up? What did your friends say when they found out that you were listening to that kind of music? Did they say anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I didn't actively at the time. Um, it, I mean, like being in school, I was an uh, honor student. I was always focused heavily on school. I wasn't really into music, listening to music so much. It was mostly in the car. Hmm. Uh, it kind of secondhand when my parents had the radio on in the background. So 
it was it was getting ingrained into me little by little over time to where it really it became a passion of mine later um but you know growing up in the 80s um i would say a lot of people you know listening to 80s music and, and i do love 80s music but i wasn't really listening to a lot of the stuff on the radio at the time but mm. uh but yeah i don't i don't really know so much what my friends were listening to i'd say probably the stuff that was current you know of the day at the time all right so um i have a bunch of great songs i'm going to be playing during my show now and uh i'd like to talk about a, a few of them you know one of the songs that means something to me is a song called valari you know you're talking about uh it was a number two hit by, way back by domenico madugno and then bobby rydell did in 1960 as well as uh Dean Martin, I had the privilege of having an interview about two years ago with Bobby Rydell. What a great entertainer. He, uh, unfortunately, yes, yeah. you know, had, uh, health issues for, for, you know, a good 10 years before he passed, you know, uh, mm-hmm. transplants and whatnot. And, but he was great. So what, what, uh, made you choose that song to sing? Well, Bobby Rydell, uh, huge, huge influence, you know, yeah, great performer. Um, Every time I'm down in Wildwood Crest, you know, hear Wildwood Days playing on the on the boardwalk, and uh, yeah. you know, Volare. Yeah, like I said, it's been done by many artists. Um, I've heard Italian versions of it. Mm. Uh, I've heard Bobby Rydell's version. You know, all great. Um, when I was in school, I was uh, in Italian class, mm. and I remember my teacher trying to get me to sing it in Italian <laughs> and I, mm-hmm. I am Italian half Italian half Greek and I should be better up by my Italian but uh, it was a little bit of a struggle for me but uh, that's where I kind of really tried singing it that was my first attempt and uh, it always kind of stuck with me and it's a great song a great mm-hmm. career song and uh you know, Bobby Rydell does a great job with it, and I think that's the version I resonated most with. And yeah, so I decided to uh, to sing it. Yeah, yeah it's what, just an awesome song. Well, great orchestrations. You know, back in the fifties, you know, in the sixties, I mean, these artists who sang these songs, and I always say there's a storyline behind it. You know, and the orchestration. I mean, be, you know, behind the singer singing, yeah, you know, yeah. is just unbelievable. So. Let's listen to Brad sing Valari, and we'll be right back.
This is Bobby J, formerly of WCBS FM, and you're listening to Ken Kojak on 60s Jukebox Review on Remember Then Radio, with you in mind. Well, I forgot to mention the bosses are in the chat room. I was going down the list of people that are here, and I went too far down. So uh, let me say hello to Steve again, originally from Brooklyn, and Angel, thank you very much for coming in and joining me with this great show with Brad Ziffer, and I noticed that, that Brad Ziffer's dad, George, is in the chat room. Okay. All right, so let's continue with the interview and the great songs. Here we go. Wow. Wow. Great rendition, Valari, right? Um, all right. Oh, yeah, terrific. Uh all right, Brad, so you know what? Who you saw on stage or who you were with that meant something to you? Sure, yeah. Well, uh, let's see. My first big concert that I went to was uh, Beyonce, Alicia Keys, actually. Um, obviously not, not associated with the 50s or the oldies, but a great concert. One of my friends took me to that. Uh, I have seen, uh, let's see, uh, the last one I probably saw was Huey Lewis in the News uh-huh. uh, right before he kind of stopped touring. I know now, unfortunately, he's got a hearing issue, which prevents him from doing that, but that was great. Uh, and I always loved Huey Lewis in the News and all their hits, especially the ones from Back to the Future. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a great favorite film of mine. <clears throat> um, but I did, I did see Johnny Maestro perform, and at the same time, I opened for him. Uh, it was a female, I was a pianist for a female singer oh. at a, a Terrytown Music Hall. At the oh, time. And, I love uh, that. Love that hall. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, great venue. Great venue. It's huge. And uh, when you're on the stage, you're looking up at all these levels of people. It's mm. overwhelming. But it, that was, uh, yeah, that was the first time I was at a venue like that. But it was uh, really great. And I was able to hang out with Johnny and the Brooklyn Bridge backstage. Probably more of his band members at first. He came a little later. But, um, oh, yeah, yeah just what an, what an experience. And, uh, you know, they were giving me a lot of encouragement. But yeah, that was awesome. And then afterward, uh, I was able to watch him perform on stage. Uh, what a voice. He's such a, yes. Yeah, what a right voice. until the very end. I mean, he was right on point. Uh, great singer. I, I was really impressed. And I think that even inspired me further to, uh, to do even more, you know, oldies and especially some of his uh, songs like 16 Candles and uh, Worst That Can Happen. And Yeah, 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 but, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Webb song, Worst That Could Happen. Um, yes, yeah. Oh, okay, that's great. All right, so you know what? Um, I found, uh, you have, I have a whole bunch of songs that uh, I'll be playing, but uh, going back to 1964, in the beginning of 64, the Polish prince, Bobby Vinton, there I said it again. I mean, uh, so many, so many uh, uh, great songs. I mean, Paul Evans, uh, the very first song that Bobby Vinton did in 1962 was the number one song, Roses Are Red, and uh, I'm actually going to be talking uh, t- t- to Paul Evans. He's the uh, the writer of that song, and uh, it's great, great, great stuff, uh, Bobby Vinton. Um, so uh, how would you feel about There I Said It Again, and how you, how'd you choose uh, that song? It's funny because, you know, growing up, uh, my dad used to sing it in the house. <laughs> he used to sing the main uh, chorus of it, and I don't know, it just stuck with me. And when I was looking at songs and going through a list, I was like, wait, I, you know, I know that, it's familiar, and it just so happens, like, he used to sing it all the time. And I was like, you know what, I, c- I could do this. And because I always, you know, I, I, when I go through music, you know, not everything resonates because I try to see what would be best for my register and my. Uh, my vocal uh, tone and that just kind of hit with me and um, yeah I just decided to do it I know he would appreciate it because <laughs> that was a favorite of his yeah. and that's kind of how I selected it but Bobby Vinton does have you know quite a selection of uh, great songs and, and I have done Roses Are Red but um, at a private event not not out uh, you know at a performance yeah. but not just I love I love his singing and uh, Blue Velvet Oh, so many. Blue Velvet, Blue on Blue. Yeah, um, Blue Velvet I, I do when I perform out. I love that one. But yeah, just a uh, great singer overall, you know. Yeah, so many songs. I uh, April was his birthday, so I uh, I played, my whole uh, show was all on Bobby Vinton. So many great, great songs, you know. Nice, um, yeah, yeah. Well, let's, 
Let's listen to one right now by Brad Ziffer, uh, going back to 1964. It was a number one chart it hit in the beginning of 64. There I said it again, and we will return right after the song. have an interview with Charlie Thomas, 85 years old. He's basically retired now, but you talk about the Drifter guy. Oh, my God. And Bobby Vinton, so many songs. Mr. Lonely, Blue Velvet, Blue on Blue, Sealed with a Kiss he remade. I Love How You Love Me, My Melody of Love. There I Said It Again, the song I just put on now is my all-time favorite. Please Love Me Forever, Over the Mountain, My Heart Belongs to Only You, To Know You Is to Love You, Am I losing you? I mean, this song, Tell Me Why, Rain, Rain, Go Away, just great, great uh, songs. I can't read them all, but uh, let's go back to the interview and the music of Brad Zipper. Thanks for listening, folks. Oh, Bobby Vinton's song. That's that's terrific. So um, let's talk about, oh, you're very welcome. Let's talk about your, your recording studio, and I'm a huge fan of uh, these classic vintage microphones and and I was told uh, that you also have uh, a whole huge selection so tell tell my listeners about your collection of microphones and your passion for that yeah sure um yeah I'm I'm very passionate about uh the true vocal chains uh and and setting up the same kind of hardware setups they would have used in the studios back then Mm. And I have a quite a selection of uh, hardware from microphones to microphone preamps, equalizers, compressors, um, digital converters, and I utilize these when I do my covers. Mm. And it, it all changed the, the chain up uh, depending on the song. But for instance, um, I have uh, Poltec EQs, which are two BQs, uh, really great rich to lush sounding on whatever you really put them on vocals especially that i use them on um i have universal audio ua preamps the Mm. 610 preamps Uh, i know sinatra uh, was big on uh, those kinds of pre's i have a neumann u87 microphone which Mm. that's been that's got a huge history behind it in the studio even till today 
uh, Neve preamps. Um, oh, expensive yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of boutique vintage stuff. It's, yeah, I mean, it, it really does impart a really beautiful, uh, lush tone and richness to the music that, you know, everything these days is becoming more digital. Mm-hmm. And uh, there are, you know, things like plugins. I don't know if listeners would understand what that is, but it's just software that emulates some of the hardware. And you can get close, but there is something, there's like a 10% magic that you can get with having the actual hardware. And that's kind of why I'm passionate. Um, just, you know, having that real true vocal chain. And I have, you know, um, an AEA R84. Mm. The ribbon mic, mm-hmm. which, yeah, similar to the RCA mics. Um, I'm actually, I've uh, I've got a Fairchild on order. It's not an actual Fairchild compressor, but these are compressors that were used back then, mm. uh, usually across the mix bus or over the entire mix of a song in the studio. And it's it's got a real nice pillowy, gentle compression, uh, and it's it probably got like I don't know, fifteen or twenty tubes in it. But what it imparts on the song is just a real lush, a lush rich, a richness. And uh, somebody, uh, somebody's creating a clone of it for me, and that'll be uh, I'll be taking delivery on that in the next couple months, and that'll be a nice addition to the studio. Well, a lot and, of money, a lot of money, a lot of money, Brad. Yeah, yeah. How much money do you think you spent uh, on this stuff? Oh gosh, it's, <laughs> I don't even know. Probably half the value of my house at least. <laughs> 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 I don't know. But so, yeah, I mean. A lot of money is Man, kind of wow. the investment, but um, yeah, and there's other things that I have, and I've you know a whole mic locker uh, that I'll pull out. You know, El- Elvis is one of his favorite uh, mics. I guess live was the Electra Voice. Re- I have the RE16. That I'll use if I do a Elvis cover. But overall, I mean, I, I started out minimal. You know, I started out with an iMac computer and like a little apogee duet interface and it's morphed and grown since then mm. and uh you know with running my breads for productions i just continued to build and you know a big aside from music i do voiceovers right. and i do commercials for radio tv and all kinds of things so some of this i use for voiceover although most of it is really reserved for the music um oh so when you talk about voice I'm sorry. When you're What's talking that? about, I'm sorry to interrupt. When you're talking about voice, okay. when you're talking about voiceovers, are there any commercials uh, or something that people would recognize? You know, or, or that you're proud to talk about that they would know. Okay, you did this certain voiceover that's on the radio or TV. Is there anything? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been I've been active for many years now. Um, I think upwards of at least 12 to 14 years doing uh, doing voiceovers. I, I've done many national TV and radio commercials. Um, I do work regularly for companies like Apple, uh, Microsoft. I'm the voice of Simpson Strong Tie. They uh, do a lot of like deck fasteners and things you'd find at like Home Depot. Uh, been the voice of Advantage Credit Union. Uh, do a lot of work for Harbor Freight. Wow. I have a promotion right now running on national TV for HughesNet, internet provider. I'm the voice of Batman for uh, DC Kids. So, uh, and, and I think they rotate a couple guys for Batman, but I'm one of the voices of Batman for uh, that you'll find on there. Oh. And, uh, oh, yeah, it's really cool. And I was, I was the voice of Wix.com for years and Food Saver, the vacuum sealing brand. So oh. I've been around. You've been active. Voice of, hey, you've been yeah. active. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Fun, yeah, that, well, that's great. Well, you know, when you get paid and you have fun doing what you're doing, that's that's great. You know. Yeah, you don't feel like you're working. It's it's like a party every day, and right. you never know what 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 clients will reach out with. But uh, yeah, it's great. Yeah, that that's also because so when I go to these concerts and you know my wife is with me, how many times are you going to see? You know, Larry Chance. How many times, he, you know, I know all his jokes by art. I said, I'm not there to listen to his jokes. I'm there, he uses the word huggage. I'm there to hug the man, you know? <laughs> so, you know, you talk about passion, and, well, she calls it an obsession, but, listen, that's my love. So, uh, yeah. for this kind of stuff. And, uh, yeah. well, now we're going to talk about a song that that's... Uh, a little bit different, and they did a great job doing it. We're talking about an Andrew Lloyd Webber song from Phantom of the Opera. All I ask of you, um, tell us about that. 
Yeah, so, well, actually, I, you know, I went to Montclair State University, and uh, I focused on theater studies. Mm. And I didn't go to school for music. Uh, I went to school for acting, for theater. Oh, okay. So I had a, quite a bit yeah, of theater training. I used to sing that in one of my classes, uh, one of the, you know, musical theater classes that I took. And yeah, so, I mean, it just kind of resonates with me. I, I do love theater. I don't go to many shows that that's something i need to change but um yeah i mean phantom of the opera is such a great show and i have seen it years ago but it always kind of stuck with me and i always felt like my voice resonated with uh you know with that show and i sing the songs and uh, yeah so but I, mm -hmm. I think it all started back when i was in montclair state in the theater department and singing that for for a class wow well i did a show uh, it's ironic that uh Oscar Hammerstein and Andrew Lloyd Webber have uh, have the same birthdays. Uh, of course, way different years in between. But uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, I, I I remember uh, reading about uh, that he he did uh, in his early years got you know coached in Manhattan. Uh, Andrew did uh, with Oscar Hammerstein, and uh, that's that had to be very special. So. Uh, all right, so let's listen to a great uh, rendition uh, by Brad. All I ask of you, and we'll be right back with some closing remarks. Okay, so I just wanted to mention that the female vocalist with Brad, her name is Andrea Lipinski. Okay, so she's going to be singing with him. What a great song. We're going back to Phantom of the Opera when it was made in 1986. And it was Sarah Brightman and Cliff Richard. And here, listen to this. What a great rendition. All I ask of you.
Hi, this is Bobby Rydell, that wild one. And you are listening to Remember Then Radio. Now, don't forget him. Okay, great rendition there, uh, Brad. Um, Thank you. Hey, you're very welcome. Um, all right, so let's talk about uh, Wildwood, New Jersey, you know, where you, where you perform and how can people uh, contact you. I'm sure you have a website, but uh, you wanted to talk uh, more about uh, what about Montclair and your productions there? Yeah, so at Montclair State, again, I uh, studied theater, and they soon found out that uh, I played piano and I like to compose music. So they asked me to compose original scores to two of their main shows. Hmm. So uh, I did the Cider House Rules and Big Love. And these were you know, big productions on their big stage. And uh, they had me, especially on Big Love, in the center of the stage on a big grand piano. And I was underscoring the play as the action was going on around me and it was really cool I mean it's such a great experience and um, I'll never forget that mm. but that was uh, that was that was really cool and that was one of the biggest opportunities that uh, somebody asked me to compose you know original stuff and yeah I mean I've, I've composed other works uh, haven't really released them so much yet but uh, <laughs> maybe that's something to come eventually oh and how about Wildwood you, I know that you, you said you uh, perform at Wildwood yeah, so Wildwood, uh, I love the Jersey Shore, uh, really passionate about Wildwood Crest especially, or just Wildwood in general. I mean, the history, uh, you know, uh, the big passion for doo-wop really resonates with me, and that postmodern look of the motels and the hotels, especially down like Ocean Ave there, it's really such, a, such an awesome place, it really transports you back, and in 2019, I got a, I got a place down there on Ocean Ave, mm. and so I go down there regularly. And I figured it'd be a great, you know, a great way to connect with more venues down there and maybe to, uh, you know, to be able to sing. And um, so, yeah, I've been singing regularly at the Caribbean Motel. In fact, I started singing there before I even got a place down there. And uh, years ago, I was doing doo-wop weekend on a regular basis. And since then, they've had me perform multiple times over the course of years for um, Labor Day weekend, uh, car show weekend. Mm. Fourth uh, of July, which I did recently, and yeah, I mean they they have really cool place. The Caribbean Motel, it's a historic landmark. Um, has all those classic fifties lines and, and colors, and the neon sign and, and the whole deal. And they do a package weekend. And if anybody wants to see me perform, that's been one of my main spots that I've been at. And yeah, I just I encourage you to call, book a weekend there. But yeah, they do a nice job, and it's a really cool place to be, right across from more or less in the convention center and on do up weekend after i perform uh they have the big convention center where they you know have everybody come down and perform and so people will go to that afterwards and mm. yeah it's really cool overall wow that's nice and and how do people contact you if they if they want to see you is there a website they can go to to find out where you're going to be yeah so i have a website uh brad and people can email me if they'd like brad at bradziffer.com uh, also uh, I'm on all the social media channels uh, Facebook I encourage people if they'd like to follow me on Facebook um, I post a lot of music covers up there mm. and I post stuff on my, I have a YouTube channel as well uh, actually there's probably two channels that I have but one of them has all the music on them yeah I mean I'm always posting stuff regularly and if anybody has any questions they could reach out to me and I'm always available to answer questions or whatnot but yeah I mean it's social media has made a huge impact um, that's the reason I started putting all these songs up the videos is uh, during COVID mm. everybody be locked at home and depressed yeah, and I right, decided right. to start releasing music and you know with the with the videos that just to kind of lift people's spirits and I've been filming a lot of footage down at Wildwood Crest or Cape May and I use some of those background videos in my videos and it's just kind of relaxing and you listen to the 50s and the oldies and you're watching the beach scenes and so it's something that I that I've just started doing. I mean, I don't make any money off of it. It's uh, just from a passion of mine, you know, right. uh, just the love of the music. The love of the music. And, right. uh, yeah, and if people want to follow along, like I said, I'm always posting stuff to my Facebook especially, so it's probably one of the best places or YouTube. Yeah, well, them. I definitely saw it right, and re recommend people to go onto YouTube because you've got some really, you know, really great, you know, videos of yourself singing and you, you, you dress up Thanks. and, and, you, and uh, 
I even saw a couple of them uh, while you were singing that the actual record, a record was playing, you know, of the song that you were singing. It shows a record, you know, on, on a turntable, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some of my videos I have, so, you know, my, with this passion of mine for oldies, my basement is uh, like the 50s man cave. I've got a, a diner booth down there. I've got a jukebox. So uh, some of my videos incorporate some of that. Uh, me yeah. sitting in the diner booth or near my jukebox and got like a Wildwood neon sign and uh, memorabilia like the, the Coke memorabilia and all kinds of oh, cool you're stuff. Kill, you're killing me now because what, 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 <laughs> no, what happened What happened, Brad is that the, you know Sandy Storm took away my well you said man cave I had a soda shop downstairs yeah. in my den uh, and I had a yeah. 56 Rockola jukebox and I had a pinball oh machine and I had an old you know the old gooseneck to make egg creams and a malted machine and a Hamilton oh, Beach and, and Coke memorabilia. Yep, yeah, all all gone. But uh, oh, <laughs> my gosh. That, All right. yeah, that's 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 what happens. But uh, anyway, I appreciate your your time and, and talking about your career. And I'll be playing sure. a, a bunch of your other songs right now. And uh, best of luck to you. And I appreciate your time you you, you gave me today and talking about your career. Oh, sure, and I thank you for having me. I mean, it's been great, and I appreciate you keeping the oldies alive and uh, doing stuff like this, and hopefully we'll connect again, and uh, maybe in the future I'll have more going on, be more successful, and we'll share some more stories. Yeah, terrific, and maybe one day we'll be able to meet per in person. There, yeah, <laughs> definitely, I'd love that. All right, thanks so much. All right, Hi, this you. is Kenny Jeremiah, the Soul Survivor. Tune in, tune up, and stay forever young with Remember Then Radio, the soundtrack of our lives. Oh, yeah. I've been trying to get to you for a long time. Okay, great, great uh, interview, Brad. And if you want to see Brad, you're in that area of Wildwood. Uh, he's going to be Labor Day weekend at the Caribbean Motel in in Wildwood, there's, uh, according to what he said to me earlier in a text, there's five rooms left for the weekend package in their 5600 Ocean Avenue, Wildwood Crest, New Jersey. Their phone number is 609-522-8292. And that's the Caribbean Motel in Wildwood Crest at 5600 Ocean Avenue, Wildwood Crest, New Jersey. 609-522-8292. Okay, so I'm going to be putting on a song now that means a lot to me. I actually interviewed with Charlie Colello, and Charlie Colello uh, produced many of the Four Seasons songs, okay, from the very beginning. And uh, here's uh, Charlie talking about My Eyes Adored You, and he's going to be uh, actually introducing his band that's going to be playing the, uh, the music, but you're going to actually hear Brad's rendition of My Eyes Adored You after Charlie Colello, the great Charlie Colello, okay, speaks about the song. Listen up. Yeah, it's fun making the records, so tonight what we're going to do is we're going to play some of them in their entirety, and I'll tell you a little story about each and every one of the ones we play. Now, most of you may know by now that I started my career making records with the Four Seasons. And we we had great success from 1962 all the way through the uh, end of the 60s. And at the end of the 60s, the Four Seasons moved, at least Frank, Frankie Valley, Bob Godio moved to California. So it sort of broke up the team. And I didn't make a record with Frankie from, I think, around 68 all the way up until 73. They signed with Motown Records, and Motown was about to drop it, they didn't have any hits. And I got a call from Bob Crew, and if you saw Jersey Boys, you remember that Bob was the producer of the Four Seasons. And Bob was one of the writers, so he wrote these songs that he, uh, was, he wanted to come back to New York and record. So I got a call from Bob, and he says he wants to come back because he has one more shot because Motown was about to drop the Seasons. And he said he found a new writer, and he wanted to play the songs for me, and he wanted me to write the arrangements. And this is the first song that we recorded on that session. adored you like 
a million miles away from me You couldn't see how I adored you So close, so close and yet so far Carried your books from school Play and make believe you're married to me You were fifth grade, I was sixth When we came to be Walking home every day Over Barnegat Bridge and Bay Till we grew into The me and you Went our separate ways My eyes adored you Though I never laid a hand on you My eyes adored you Like a million miles away from me You couldn't see how I adored you So close So close and yet so far Headed for city lights Climbed the ladder up to fortune and fame Worked my fingers to the bone Made myself a name Funny I seem to find That no matter how the years unwind Still I reminisce about the girl I miss And the love I left behind My eyes adored you Though I never laid a hand on you My eyes adored you Like a million miles away from me You couldn't see how I adored you So close, so close and yet so far
Grace Maestro, the widow of Johnny Maestro, and you're listening to Ken Kojak at the 60s Jukebox Review at the Remember Then Radio. Okay, I thought it was appropriate to put on Grace, Johnny's uh, widow, after that song. Uh, great. You know what? What makes a good... Uh, it's the, You know what it is? Brad knows what it is. It's the tracks... It's the audio equipment and the mixing correctly so that the voice is sounding, you know, equal to what the music is, okay? And the music doesn't drown out the singer. So he's got, you know, top-notch equipment, the very expensive audio stuff, the, the, the mics and whatnot, and the tracks are great. So um, that's what makes a great uh, a song, you know what I mean? So talking about a great song... Let's go uh, to a song now from June of 1964 on the Atlantic label. It was a number five hit for the Drifters, written by Kenny Young and Arthur Resnick. Originally, uh, lead was Rudy Lewis on this song, Under the Boardwalk. But here's Brad singing in his rendition. Oh, when the sun beats down and burns the tar and your shoes get so hot You wish your tired feet were fireproof Under the boardwalk Down by the sea Yeah, yeah On a blanket with my baby Is where I'll be Under the From the park you hear the happy sound of the carousel mm, You can almost taste the hot dogs and french fries they sell Remember Then Radio, soundtrack of our lives. All right, soundtrack of our lives. All right, Bubba, Bubba Man. Okay, so uh, let me uh, let you know that um, Howard reminded me that um, I didn't, uh, I forgot to mention it was Kenny Nolan and Bob Crew on November of 74 who wrote My Eyes Adored You. And, uh, and I didn't want to forget. All right, so I had Gary Puckett as my guest uh, about two years ago. And Gary Puckett uh, had, has a songwriter named Jerry Fuller who wrote four of his songs. Jerry Fuller wrote Traveling Man for Ricky Nelson. I want you to hear the story, what he talks about Traveling Man and Ricky Nelson. And uh, actually... 
really about Jerry Fuller, and then we'll put on Traveling Man. Listen to Gary Parker. He is record producer. So many songs that he wrote with uh, for you guys. Jerry Fuller. And Jerry Fuller, I looked up and he says, it says that he sang the uh, Tennessee Waltz. He appeared on the bandstand. And in 1961, he wrote Traveling Man, which was supposed to be sung by Sam Cooke, but of course, Ricky Nelson got that in 1961. And it also says that he wrote like 23 songs for Nelson. He produced O.C. Smith, Little Green Apples, and Al Wilson's Show and Tell in 1973. I mean, uh, unbelievable uh, writer of songs of yours and, and a singer and a writer of songs of others as well. Yeah, an incredibly talented man. Nelson Cruz, that was the record of the year, I think, in 1973 or 74. And Jerry not only wrote it, but he produced it and he published it. So that song alone had to make him a gazillion Oh, my God. But man, he was very, very talented. Still is. We're, we're in touch these days. And he's talking about show and tell uh, Al uh, Wilson's song. That he made a gazillion dollars on. All right, so here is Traveling Man and uh, Brad Zipper. Oh, I'm a traveling man. I've made a lot of stops all over the world. And in every port, I own the heart of at least one lovely girl. A pretty senorita waiting for me down in New Mexico. If you're ever in Alaska, stop and see my cute little Eskimo. Oh, my sweet fruit line down in Berlin town makes my heart start to yearn. Early. Thank you for listening to the Ken Kojak 60s Jukebox Review on Remember Then Radio. Well, thank you, Carol. Thank you uh, very, very much there, Shirley. You're not Carol, you're Shirley. <laughs> I'm doing great today. Absolutely. Let's put this on again. I'm doing great. Is she Carol or Shirley? Shirley, she Shirley. Okay. Anyhow, um, alrighty, now we're going to go back to a song that um, Columbia label, originally Johnny Mathis back in uh, February 25th of 57 at the Columbia 30, 30th Street Studio, written by Robert Allen and Al Stillman. What a great song. It's not for me to say, it's for Brad to say. <laughs> to say you'll 
That's it, Norm and Knight. Another privilege to have a great interview with him at the end of last year. Um, okay, and talk about uh, knowledge. The Las Vegas guy, Don Riggio, just uh, texted to me. You know, he wrote three books, you know, Don Riggio, about rock and roll, doo-wop and kind of stuff, right? Seven Inch Vinyl was his first one. Uh, he writes to me, that Traveling Man was the first number one hit on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, June of 1962. So we get a lot of knowledge here and a lot of information from people all over the country. So thank you, Don, for that information, and please don't bill me. All right, now we're going to go to George Michael's song, Careless Whisper.
there in Radio Land. This is Mikey, the Baron of Bayside, and you're listening to Ken Kojak on the Jukebox Review of the 60s on Remember Then Radio, RTR. Is it? 
favorite moments in time. And you're listening to Ken Kojak's 60s Jukebox Review right here on Remember Then Radio. Thank you, Tom. I can't multitask. I can't type and go on my computer here, the laptop, and play the music and keep track of my cheat sheet and all. But Tom, moments in time, great, great stuff. He sends every single, uh, every week, you know, just great facts about music. And he's a great educator of that. And he's got a great book. And uh, what can I tell you? Just look up moments in time and order that book. There's just so much to read about the past history of this great music. So thank you so much, Tom, for coming in. This is Brad Ziffer. Uh, he's a voice over actor. Okay, he's been on uh, for many, many years doing commercials on radio and whatnot. And he's a singer, and he's got a great studio. So, you know, he puts together these great tracks. He plays piano, and he's got a great voice. So you came in. Uh, he came in in time. He didn't hear the interview, but I'm playing some. Uh, I picked out some of my favorite and hopefully your favorite music uh, tributes as well. Thank you, Tom, for coming in. Appreciate it. Okay, so now we're going to go to Memories, all right, and Elvis's rendition of Memories in Brad Ziffer doing his rendition, okay? Here we go. Ken Kojak, 60s Jukebox Review, heard every Tuesday right here from 8 till 11, rememberthenradio.com. This is Don K. Reed, and you're listening to my good friend Ken Kojak 
on the 60s Jukebox Review, right here on Remember Then Radio. Okay, so Memories, Elvis did that song back in February 25th of 69 when it was released. Mac Davis wrote it, who also wrote In the Ghetto for Elvis, and Billy Strange as well, and the musicians behind Elvis were all the wrecking crew, so you can't get any better than that. Well, let's go back to 1959, and here's a guy who really, uh, his life was so shortened, passed on at the age of 37 years old from congenital heart disease, and of course I'm talking about uh, Bobby Darren, all right? What a great, great uh, guy, and uh, Don Kirshner discovered him back in the 50s, but what a great song, um, also called La Mer, but this is Beyond the Sea, the English version. Yes, yes, another historian. Um, everyone's sending me different things. They're doing it on in the chat room, and I'm getting text while the show is going on. And um, Frankie says there was a little plagiarism problem back today, uh, 1976, with um, George Harrison. The song My Sweet Lord was uh, very similar to He's So Fine by the Chiffons. And uh, so, uh, again, information with Frankie B. He's definitely a music historian. Thank you, Frankie. He's listening right now on Alexa, right? So I better not say anything too loud because Alexa may change the station. Anyway, uh, all right, so now we're going to go to a song that was originally done like 1952, Joe Stafford 
did this song, Joni James did this song, and then in the 60s, the Duprees sang this song, and I'm talking about You Belong to Me. And you're listening to Ken Kojak on Remember Then Radio. Wow, Mel Carter, another great interview with great songs. What a voice. Some people just keep their voice no matter how old they get. And I'm talking about also Jay Siegel, right? Unbelievable. Um, so, anyway, uh, I want to thank again um, Stardust. That's it. Stardust. Well, that, that's actually Janet's uh, email, uh, right? Stardust. Okay. Um, anyway, I want to thank Janet, you know, for the introduction. But we're not finished yet. There's a couple of more songs that I'd like to play. And I saw Paul Anka in Westbury Music Fair about two months ago. This guy is unbelievable. He came out into the audience and. Really, really um, approachable kind of guy, and just uh, you can feel the love from the guy from Ottawa, Canada. Well, here's Brad Ziffer's rendition and his interpretation of Put Your Head on My Shoulder. Put your head on my shoulder.
that loves a game, a game you just can't win. If there's a way, I'll find it someday, and then this fool will rush in. Put your head on. your head on my shoulder, whisper in my ear, baby, words I want to hear, baby, put your head on my shoulder. Father Thunder was an engineer. Choo Choo Charlie was his name, we hear. He had an engine and he sure had fun. He used good and plenty candy to make his train run. Charlie says, Love my Larry Chance, 
we'll be seeing him uh, on Saturday at Lead East, okay, and also on the card will be uh, Bobby DeAndrea from the Knockouts, and uh, The Excellence, and Vito Pacone in the Elegance. And that's this Saturday, Lead East weekend. It'll be the, uh, I believe, the 40th uh, weekend every year since the Lead East started. All right, so that was my kind of girl, Matt Monroe, back did it on the uh, Parlophone label back in 1961, and um, written by Leslie Brickus, and uh, uh, Leslie also teamed up with Anthony Newley to co-write Goldfinger. So that's a great song. Uh, all right, so for the last song now that I'm going to play, uh, not the last song of the night, of course, I stay on until uh, 11 o'clock, I have other songs, but the last song of Brad Ziffer it was written by Barry Mann and Hank Hunter, produced by Don Costa. It was a number seven song back in February of 1960 and one of my all-time favorites so I saved it for last it's Steve Lawrence's uh, footsteps done of course by Brad Ziffer listen up this is great to the fabulous Ken Kojak on the 60s Jukebox Review. Remember then, radio. Thank you, Janice Ian, right? Janice Ian, Society's Child. Child, and then 17 after that. She was young when she sang those songs that she actually wrote. Talented girl, right? Janice Ian, and uh, really Janice Fink, but she used her brother's name for her last name, Ian. All right, so uh, it was also uh, Caesar Berry from the Times. It was uh, his 80th birthday the other day. So I found this uh, song in my archives, and I hope you'll like it. Here we go. Seasons pass, but nothing ever changes my love for you. The falling
Something different here by the times. Well, okay, autumn leaves as they fall. Okay, all right. You know, Little Anthony came out with a, a brand new CD now. All righty, and uh, you can get it. I'm sure you can get it on Amazon, and you can get it through Stevie Dunham and uh, and Mike Miller. That that's for sure. So I went into the archives, and for you doo-wop fans, and I'm sure Stevie is gonna love this one, right? Listen up to Little Anthony right now. on the 60s jukebox review on Remember Then Radio! Paul Nevins got Sedaka a recording contract at RCA. The singer proceeded to have a string of 20 hits. Stupid you stop it on me. And I said to Neil, why don't you do a song with a girl's name in it? And, you know, like talk in the middle, we'll put up the echo, we'll make a deep voice, and he came up with a song called Oh Carol, which went to number one. Hits of the world, and I analyzed every hit in every country, and I wrote on Carol. Whether that has to do with a song that we have, but the young man has just returned from probably the most successful tour of his life in South America, where they uh, turned the place upside down for him. A very talented young composer, author, singer, a very fine person too. The man who sings "Oh Carol," Neil Sedaka.
see them daggone Neil Sadaki records? Hi, this is Randy Silverman of the Impalas, and you're listening to Ken Kojak from Remember Then Radio. Hey, Randy Silverman. Hey, my buddy, the next town over. Okay, so you heard the answer to the song, O'Neill, O'Carroll, and now you're going to listen to what Carol King says is important to her, and then we're going to put on the song from 1962 on the Dimension label, and perhaps you'll remember the song I'll be putting on in a moment. Listen up what Carol King says about a down-to-earth person. Jack and the 60s jukebox review remember then radio okay Livingston Taylor another great guy um, all right now um, I got a surprise for, for Lynn who's listening now who comes into my show every week and I want to thank everyone for, for uh, that's not only not in the chat room but also that that's listening that's you know keep People keep on texting me and whatnot. If you're not in the chat room, you're texting me. And, and I mean, there's, this this uh, program could be heard all over the world in all the countries around the world. It's worldwide, right? Remember then, radio. Uh, Lynn, uh, my buddy um, Frankie B sent me this. And you know that I'm a huge Gene Pitney fan and also love the music of Jay Black. So listen up what he sent me, and it's 24 Hours from Tulsa, Gene Pitney, and Jay Black singing it together. Well, that's the way they mixed it. Listen up. Dearest, darling, I had to write to say that I won't be home anymore. So something happened. To me while I was driving home. 
alone and I'm not the same anymore. Oh, I was only ready for hours to go. Yes, they just finished their uh, Happy Together tour. I seen them in, in June at Westbury, and they were all over the country. Uh, you know, Ron, Ron Dante and and uh, all, all, all the guys. Uh, Gary Puckett, of course, is great. Uh, and uh, the um, let me see who else was on that uh, show. Oh, the the uh, both. The Turtles, but it, it, Ron Dante's in the Turtles, and the Cow Sills, and the Vogues, and uh, it was just a great show. Anyway, so I found something a little different uh, by the Beatles, and uh, it's called Taste of Honey. Listen, listen to this thing. A taste of honey, tasting much sweeter. Sweeter than wine. 
then we're bringing them back and bring them again here on Remember Then Radio. All right, now I'm going to go deep into the archives. And, I mean, Johnny Mathis does a great Misty. Well, here is the great Ella Fitzgerald. This is terrific. Listen up. got a couple more and then we'll uh, talk about how you can download Brad Ziffer's uh, music and uh, he lets me know that he's going to be coming out with a CD uh, eventually then you can get it that way as well but uh, I'll talk to you about YouTube and download right after uh, I play this Larry Chance cover what a great uh, listen up
All right, I wanted to play a song for uh, for Howard, who's in the chat room. That was the Traveling Willsburys and the Runaway, Del Shannon song. Uh, Howard, you have a huge, huge love for Broadway, so I'm going to put this on. I played it earlier. It's Brad Ziffer's rendition with uh, Andrea Lipinski, the female vocalist, with him singing All I Ask of You. Listen, Howard, for you. Howard Tucker, Staten Island, New York. You're listening to my friend Ken Kojak on Remember Then Radio. To my delight. Okay. All right there, Howard. Um, Howard's a huge, huge uh, Broadway music fan, and uh, especially 
when you're talking about the Jersey Boys, he knows every fact about that that production. Anyway, uh, so if you, this is what I do when I when I need to download a song, I go to YouTube. It's called YouTube by Click. All right, um, and you can go to Brad Ziffer, right? Brad Z I F F E R. Go to his YouTube page and he has all his songs there and uh, you'll see some you know great videos as well besides his his singing he's got a, a terrific studio and it's all about the microphones the audio equipment the tracks all done perfectly so uh that, that's that's the way i get all my music i go youtube by click and then you can go right into your downloads into your a laptop computer and you can hear whatever song you want to hear that's how I get my music so um, let me just uh, play this this uh, thank you good night thing when go okay so again I thank everyone for joining uh, Brad you have uh, great great stuff and I want to thank everyone for coming into the chat room uh, let's see who's here now. Oh, a lot of people are still here. Tom Locke, God bless you, Tom. Thank you so much. Uh, a guy with your knowledge of music to come on to my show. It's really, really nice. I appreciate that. I, and I love all your stuff you send me. Um, Mike, Baron of Bayside, you know, we wish you well. And I'm glad you're back in New York taking care of your health issue and god bless you and uh, george right brad's dad thank you so much you're always welcome you know uh, remember then radio is a 24 7 day awake uh seven day a week station so you can find you know a program that you will uh like besides my program that comes on tuesdays there's uh, all kind of genres of music throughout uh, the 24 7 here um bubba my buddy bubba my regulars always come to support me. Janet, who does, didn't come in today at 1040, I appreciate that. She's my connection to Brad. Trez, three, thank you, Trez. Lynn, what can I tell you? You know, uh, you're a great supporter, and I love all your uh, your picks, all your song picks. Um, the guest, I don't know who the guest is. Thank you, guest. <laughs> a, Walter. Thank you, Walter. Mary is on from before, from the show before me. Um, so I thank you, uh, you know, coming into Dennis's show, and then you stick all you did the, the three hours with me as well. And so did uh, Walter. I saw Walter's name also in chat. So uh, anyway, until next week, this is Ken Kojak, the 60s Jukebox Review. Remember then radio.com and uh, thank you for joining me World Wide Web. Have a great night, be safe and be healthy. Till next week, take care guys. Thank you.